The next topic we're going to speak on is valuation. Valuation is one of those things that cut across all areas, whether it's corporate finance, financial intermediation, or uh, investments. You have to know valuation. You have to understand how to value assets. Whether you're selling, you want to make sure you get the highest price possible. Whether you're buying, you don't want to sell, pay too much for it. So, valuation. Investopedia.com defines valuation as the process of determining the worth of an asset. Pretty good working definition. There's two main ways that we do this in finance. Number one is called discounted cash flow analysis. It is much more rigorous. It is, much, it is the theoretically correct way to do things, but it's pretty challenging sometimes. The second way we do things is market multiples. It's a lot faster, a lot easier, but it's not quite always as accurate. It is interesting when we get out, when you get out of academia, uh, when you first graduate, there have been studies, in fact, uh, Dan Dorian at NYU did a study with his MBA students. And he talked about it and he said, when they were in the MBA, when they were in the program, almost all of them thought this was the right way to do it. Many of them went and worked on Wall Street and they asked the question, this is how many of them did it. Market multiples, things to re remember, maybe not theoretically correct, but a lot easier and a lot faster. So we're going to start off with DCF, Discounted Cash Flow Analysis, and just quickly show how to do it. While it's funny, do it anyways. Draw the timeline. What we want to do is identify when the cash flows are occurring. You identify cash inflows, I don't know, $100, $200, whatever. You identify what period they're coming in. You then take the present value of those, add them up, add the present values to get the present value of the benefits of this asset. And you go all the way out. You go up from time zero to time infinity. You add them all up. More realistically, what you do is you go for a few years, typically five to ten. I like five, by the way. You come up with what's called a horizon or a terminal value. That's just a very shorthand, quick way, an approximation of how much you could sell it for at the end of this period. You do these very much detailed. Here you just take a rough approximation from that point on and figure out what the present value of them is. You add it up, you get what the value is, the, uh, the asset is valued at. I commented in class, and we'll talk again here, that valuation and capital budgeting is very similar. Why? If you remember, net present value from before was present value of benefits minus the present value of the costs. All we're doing in valuation is assuming the cost is zero. We would be willing to pay up to that point, up to the point where net present value was just slightly positive. But other than that, they're very, very similar. Capital budgeting and valuation are both looking at the worth of assets, how much something is worth. Market multiples, much more common, commonly used, for example, P-E ratios, market to book ratios, etc. What we do here is look at similar firms, same industry, same growth rate, same size, etc., and determine what they are selling at. For instance, if we have a stock that the, the overall value of the firm, let's just say, is a million dollars, this is the value of firm A, and, and it has earnings per share, total earnings, let's look at total earnings, forget earnings per share, total earnings of 100,000. You take the value of the firm, 1 million, divided by 100,000, and you get a P-E ratio of 10. Now that would say along these lines that if everything is the same, a company with earnings of 50,000, if they have the same P-E ratio, should have a market value of half a million dollars. Now there's a lot of different things that go into this, and this is a, only a rough cut approximation. Number one, what if companies use different earnings statements, or different uh, accounting measures? <coughs> also, what happens if one company is growing, one company is not growing? The way I like to use market multiples is as a warning sign. And this, I'll, I'll end with this story is 55 miles an hour fast or slow. Ratios are just like that. 
55 miles an hour on the highway is pretty slow. 55 miles an hour if you drive across the ca campus parking lot is pretty fast. Market multiples are similar. They tell us if everything is the same, where to look. Multiples and ratios can be used to look over time, the same firm selling at the same ratio, or across firms at the same time. But that said, they are only a first cut. You still need to do more analysis. And never use just one ratio to value a firm. You want to surround it with lots of ratios. Multiple P ratios, market to book ratios, maybe Q values, and others. So again, discounted cash flow, theoretically correct, but a lot more difficult. Market multiples, a lot faster, a lot easier, but still not accurate.